Don the Wolf. Is it the shoes? Money's got to be the shoes. Shoes, shoes, shoes. shoes. It's Nike. Reebok. I like your Nike. Reebok. I like your Nike Air. The competition. Nike. Basketball. Jump high. For the past five years, Nike and Reebok have dominated the urban street shoe market. Now with the growth declining, the multi-billion dollar industry faces a new challenge for top position, LA gear. With sales of women's aerobic shoes falling dramatically, LA gear have realized the time has come to move out of the gym and onto the streets. Now it's time to play. Serious hang time. They're fighting for market share, like any, uh, in any uh, industry. There's a rivalry among the, the uh, sneaker companies precisely because there's just so much money involved. I mean, these are the biggest companies in the sporting goods market by far. They're going to be at war for, for as long as people are interested in these kinds of shoes. Nice shoes. The menswear market is the combat zone. The urban street warrior demands an authentic high-performance sports shoe. Reebok and Nike were the first to target inner-city youth, and now LA Gear are doing the same. This is something you can buy. I think with any leader, people have a tendency to get as close to them as they can. LA Gear has uh, done some patterns that look similar to ours. And uh, we're going to continue to lead and let them do what they're going to do. A lot of leather, it's light, and it's comfortable. And I'm going to wear it. Our uh, transition into men's has been fabulous. Matter of fact, our men's business now is uh, rapidly growing to be over 30% of our business overall. LA Gear's traditional Baywatch image cut no ice for the street scene, but Nike and Reebok's tactics of aggressive ads and celebrity endorsements definitely did. So 1990 began with a new look LA Gear. Joe, I'm glad you had a great off season, but now it's time to get back to work. Showtime! You do everything in those shoes? Everything! I think that we're still perpetuating the same image. It's a lifestyle image. Um, we entered into the men's market a couple years ago, and uh, we've gotten very performance oriented on that side of that business. But overall, the image really hasn't changed. LA Gear's target market is much different than ours. They are after that fashion consumer. We are after the performance consumer. Today, Mr. Robinson's going to talk about his Nike shoes. Mr. Robinson likes the Nike Air cushioning. Don't I know you? Nice shoes. Yo! Are you sure we haven't met before? Do you know how I get up for my game? Do you know, do you know, do you know? That's right. Air Jordan, Air Jordan, Air Jordan. Mike, what's up? Oh, m money, money. Why you want to do that to me? Why you leave me hanging? If we detail our shoes right and they continue to perform the way they will, uh, we don't need to worry about LA gear. We just got to worry about Nike. LA Gear has successfully eaten into Reebok sales and is heading for Nike's position. But being number one in the urban market brings its own problems. Operation Push is a special interest group uh, that uh, represents the interests of black people in the United States. And they've uh, taken on, taken aim at Nike for um, its advertising practices and um, also because uh, they don't have enough black executives and they've taken aim at Nike precisely because they're number one. With top-of-the-range trainers retailing at around $150, Nike's profits have become other people's problems. In New York, people are killing each other over shoes. You know, you got a kid who would kill a little, a little kid for a shoe that's two sizes too small for him because he needs these $150 shoes. And that's because they've been trained that this is a, this is a statement. You know, this isn't a pair of tennis shoes anymore. This is a way of life, you know, Nike. To say that we are targeting inner city youth really is not true. What we're really doing is targeting the elite athlete with the finest shoes we can make. Inner city youth, that's who's buying these shoes. You got a lot of brothers who really can't even afford Cheerios, you know, that get up in the morning and take off and beg everybody they can get a pair of Nikes because they relate to these sports heroes because those are the only heroes they have. Facing a boycott from Operation Push and also bad publicity surrounding the sneaker murders, Nike has been forced to act. Oh, sweat, oh, sweat, oh, sweat. Using sports heroes as positive role models, Nike are spending $5 million on their staying school and anti-drugs campaigns. If you're into drugs, don't get into my shoes. Mr. Robinson doesn't like garbage in his shoes. If you're into drugs, don't come into my neighborhood. Mr. Robinson doesn't like garbage in his neighborhood. 
Uh, right now, because of the size of Nike and some of the things that are going on, we have kind of a corporate responsibility to be involved in the community. Bo knows all this stuff because he stayed in school. Don't be stupid. Stay in school. It's not a moral issue, or it's not really a gift. It's marketing. It's marketing just like any other commercial. For Nike, this strategy is working. It has silenced many critics, and its market position remains unchanged. Well, at present, the boycott really has not affected our sales. We just showed the largest quarter that we've had, uh, not only in sales, but also in futures orders. And time will tell. Am I making myself clear? Nike may be winning this battle, but it seems to be heading straight for another. Good, clean American competition. You know, it's there. Most of the articles go, sneaker wars, or, you know. We're very happy to be number three, and uh, we're going to keep working, and hopefully we'll get to number two, and someday we have plans to be number one. Watch out, guys. But hitting the number one spot may be more difficult than L.A. Gear imagines. L.A. Gear? Nobody wears L.A. Gear. Michael Jackson wears L.A. Gear. And that's the only person I know that wears L.A. Gear.